Yesterday, there was actually a pretty significant train derailment outside of Philadelphia. Um, a, a train, a, you know, relatively large freight train outside of that city derailed, I think, 10 plus cars of that train off the tracks. Let's take a listen to a little bit of what happened there. Some homes in the Philadelphia area are being evacuated after a train derailment on this Monday morning. Police say a 40 car freight train derailed around five o'clock Eastern time about 90 minutes ago. And at least 10 of those cars reportedly came off the tracks. You can see right there. No injuries have been reported. Hazmat crews have been called in. A white substance was reportedly seen leaking from at least one tanker, but there's still no word on what's inside the derailed train cars. So that evacuation has since been lifted. Residents have been allowed to return to their homes. But this is yet another reminder that, I mean, first of all, the number of derailments that we have in this country is insane. And other countries do not have this same, like, we're just going to routinely accept that trains come off the tra track with major risk to life and limb all the time. But it also highlights that we have yet to do anything in response to that horrific uh, train derailment in East Palestine that led to them, you know, uh, lighting the whole thing on fire and uh, exposing all of these residents to some sort of horrific chemical cocktail. The residents of that town may well be dealing with the fallout of those actions for their entire lives. They are certainly right now still dealing with the aftermath of this, but it slipped out of the news media's attention. And guess what? At the time, the rail lobby basically said, we're going to wait this out and we're going to wait for public pressure to die down and then we're going to try to kill any bill that comes forward. And as of today, it kind of looks like that strategy is yeah. working. Let's put this up on the screen, uh, the state of play in terms of what is a bipartisan rail safety effort. The headline here from Politico is GOP discord threatens Senate response to railway disaster. The rail safety divide within the Republican Party is a microcosm of its realignment over the past few years. Trump supports it. But other than Senator Mitt Romney, the effort gets almost all its GOP support from the party's small yet growing populist wing. And unless the party's establishment gets more fully on board, the safety plan that J.D. Vance shaped with Senator Sherrod Brown, they're both from Ohio, Ohio colleagues there, may stall out. You only have, remember what a big game Republicans talked at the time mm -hmm. about how much ca they cared about this issue and how much they trashed the Biden administration, how much they held hearings, they, you know, all virtue signaled about how much they cared about making sure that this never happens again. Do you know how many Republicans have now said that they support what is a very modest incremental improvement in rail safety? Seven. Yep. Seven. That's it. And so, you know, again, the rail lobby having their way. And they do contribute a lot of money uh, to some of the key members of that party. There's also in the House, the situation is even less promising because it's controlled by the Republicans. So in the Senate, you have, as far as I know, basically all the Democrats on the side of this legislation, which, again, is very modest. Actually, let me give you the details here. Put this up on the screen from, from Bloomberg. This is all that it would do. Would require sensors to detect overheated ball bearings. That was a likely cause of that East Palestine crash. Would tighten rules on hazardous cargo and increase maximum fines to $10 million. Would require a two-person crew on freight trains. Two people. That's it. That's all we're talking about. Labor agreements already require the same, but the Association of American Railroads has argued that new technology should allow single-person crews to operate safely. Think about how gigantic these trains are, and you want a single-person crew. A study for the group in 2015 estimated railroads could save more than $2 billion a year using one-person crews, a boon to freight giants like Norfolk Southern or Union Pacific. So they've been pushing for this for a while. And, you know, Republicans now throwing up objections about how, oh, we can't do this because it would empower the Biden administration, it would hand them more power, et cetera. I mean, these are really modest proposals. And it's just pathetic that you have so little support um, for this bill so that, you know, that was crafted in a bipartisan manner that was on an issue that everybody seemed to care about at the time. But as the public spotlight has moved on, they feel like they can politically let it die. Yeah, I mean, I, look, this is uh, the classic story. And actually, this is a really good one to analyze the problems in our politics today. So let's go through the details. This is a bill that has been endorsed by the president of the United States, Joseph Biden. This is a bill endorsed by former president Donald Trump. But it is one of the rarest things in the world to have the support of both leaders, ostensibly, of each party. And yet, despite all the media protestations, they care about East uh, Ukraine and not East Palestine, 
all of the savaging of Pete Buttigieg when an actual bipartisan, decent fix to the problem comes to the fore, what happens? Nothing. And in fact, uh, one quote here is perfect from a Republican senator who actually does support the bill, quote, JD's gotten the classic runaround here, which is we wanna work with you, we wanna work with you, but then they try and kill it in the committee. And now they're slow walking it to the floor. Mm -hmm. What I'm told is that there are not 60 votes. They also know people like Susan Collins, the queen of bipartisanship, Lindsey Graham. He never met a Democrat he doesn't wanna work with to send more sh uh, aid to Ukraine. They're quote, non-committal and not one member of GOP leadership supports this bill. So that includes John Cornyn, that includes John Thune, Senator Mitch McConnell. None of the actual bigwigs are actually working to pull this thing. I once again note endorsed by Donald Trump, Joe Biden. It's got both senators from Ohio, legitimately bipartisan in its introduction and can not even yet get to 60 to actually come to the floor. And the main person responsible for this, honestly, is Ted Cruz, um, who is the head of the Commerce Committee who tried to kill the bill while it was in markup and remains the major obstacle to the bill coming to the floor. I actually asked J.D. about this whenever he was on our show previously. Here's what he had to say. The fundamental argument here that Ted made is he doesn't like the fact that the, the bill gives any discretion or any authority uh, to uh, the Biden administration, right? Well, the Biden administration enforces the laws. Mm -hmm. So I've been saying for the past three months, and a lot of Republicans have been e echoing me, that Biden administration needs to do more. So here's a piece of legislation that forces the Biden administration to do more. You can't, on the one hand, say they're not doing enough, and on the other hand, fight a piece of legislation that forces them to actually take action. Uh, there, there's a deeper problem here, which is if you think that we're going to have to fight back against corporate America, against big tech, against the pharmaceutical industry, if you think we're going to have to do these things, well, the government's pretty much the only path in town. That is the representation of the people. That is the entity that has the actual authority and the power to go after something like a big tech or like the railway industry. So you've got to be willing to use the power that the people gave us under this constitutional system. And, and I understand people are reactive. And look, sometimes, of course, the government, oftentimes, the government does things it shouldn't do. Sometimes it fights progressive battles that it shouldn't fight. But if we're going to win the argument, we have to be willing to actually use the levers of power and use what the people gave us. That's what this fight is all about. I mean, what he lays out there is a theory of government, apparently, which is novel uh, to w Republicans whenever corporate interests are involved. They're like, we'll use the government whenever we want, you know, in order to cut taxes and all of that. But when it comes to regulating one of the, mo the industries most benefited by federal dollars in the entire country, no, 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 then we can't be doing anything. Even when dangerous chemicals have leaked out, injured people who were in the area, you know, alleg uh, allegedly for the Norfolk Southern lawyers here. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, all of these pets who allegedly died as a result of this and who were allegedly poisoned in East Palestine, Ohio. Yeah, and yeah. Ted Cruz, I mean, it is disgusting because he was one of these ones. Yeah, he was. He was happy to go out yeah. in front of the cameras and, you know, trash Pete, trash Biden, which we did the same, mm -hmm. but we actually meant it. And we yeah. actually wanted things to be done to fix the problem so that we can move forward and not have an entire American town poisoned because we failed to take basic precautionary measures like having sensors aboard a giant freight train with explosive chemicals that can poison waterways for like a 50 mile radius. And so, yeah, Ted Cruz, he was happy to posture for the cameras and a whole bunch of them uh, alongside him as well. But when it comes down to it, guess what? He's gonna side with the donor class. He's gonna side with big business. And they throw up the most transparent, like tired talking points that if you dig one inch deeper, don't hold up to scrutiny. They'll just say like, oh, it's too much government. You know what? Don't be so stupid about regulation. Yes, some regulation is way over the top and becomes counterproductive and is genuinely an impediment. And you should be opposed to that regulation. I don't care if you're on the right, left, center, whatever. Some things are important for health and safety. And you know what? These rail giants have turned massive profits, record-breaking historical profits. They can afford to have two people on their crews. They can afford to install a few sensors on their trains to keep these horrific derailments from happening. And these, and you know, one of these other things is just they have to notify 
officials in the state if their train is carrying hazardous materials so that first responders are prepared. I mean, we're talking about such basic, obvious stuff, but rather than get into any of those details, because any thinking person would look at this and go like, well, that makes sense. I can't believe we don't have that already. Instead of getting into those details, they just hand wave away. Oh, we can't give the Biden administration power. It's too much government. We're in favor of small government. And so we're just going to wait and sit back and let this whole situation unfold again. Yeah. It is truly disgusting. Graceful. Yeah, and uh, look, the bill's not dead yet. It is possible. So, you know, I would rarely do this, but if you're one of those people and you know a senator and you live in their state, you know, maybe consider actually sending something. Because, you look, I mean, how many senators, Republican senators specifically, they, I, I was a congressional intern once upon a time. The number of boomers who are calling in being like, I'm so sick that you're not doing enough to find Barack Obama's birth certificate. That is what these staff assistants and offices have to deal with on an almost daily basis. So I bet they rarely get any mail or a phone call or anything like that on rail. I'm not sure if it would even help. I'm literally just doing this of my own accord, but consider it, you know, especially if you're from the industrial Midwest and you have a senator, you know, in that, or you have a lot of railway that moves through your state because, you know, nobody thinks about it until an entire town gets basically, you know, allegedly poisoned. And uh, after that, you know, it becomes a flash in the pan moment and then boom, it's gone. And unfortunately, it's just business as usual. And these are people who actually want to do something. Sherrod Brown is a serious person. So is J.D. Vance. Many of the Democrats and Republicans who signed on to this bill, there's a reason the former President Trump endorsed it. And there's a reason that President Biden endorsed it. It's not a joke. It's not one of the rare messaging things. And in my opinion, that's why they're trying to kill it so badly. That's yeah. exactly why they're actually trying to Because it might do actually it. do something. I yeah. mean, they, God, they're so greedy. They don't want to take a single penny off their bottom line. No. And they've got all of these dudes in their pocket. And you see, you know, their, their strategy, and this has worked so many times, is just we'll delay it, we'll push it out, and then we'll quietly kill the thing. And next thing you know, you know, next time this happens, people are going to turn around and go, wait, I thought you cared about this. Mm -hmm. I thought you said you were going to do something about it. And as of today, absolutely nothing. So, yes, shame and pressure these people. We're at seven Republican votes. We need, like, three more in the Senate to get it over the line. Then maybe, you know, the House might take it up and, and feel some pressure to do something as well. It would be great if President Trump would, instead of just sort of tacitly approving it, if he would actually get involved. Right. But as of today, this is, you know, a, a shameful episode as it stands at this point. Absolutely. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to BreakingPoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber-funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So, again, to subscribe, it's BreakingPoints.com.